Thank you for getting on. Are you ready to get started? <laughs> I know you are. Okay, so if you have someone that you want to share this with, go ahead and swipe up if you're on your phone or just share it on your um, laptop and then that way it will be on your page for you to go back through and listen to a second time. So today I am going to walk you through how to look at your life in 90-day segments, how to design your life and live your vision in 90-day segments of time. Um, I created the 90-day planner 20 years ago. 20 years ago, I was at a crossroads, and so maybe like me, you're at a crossroads in your life. Maybe like me, you are at a season of your life where you're asking yourself, is this what there is? Is this all there is? Is there something more? Uh, personally, I was at a place of great restlessness, and the thing that I kept thinking and the thing that I kept praying to God in my prayers was, don't let me miss it. Do not let me miss your highest. Do not let me miss your biggest. Do not let me miss your best. And there was a restlessness. So if you're on here today and you got on intentionally because you wanted to be on for Design Your Life and Live Your Vision, I'm going to guess that maybe you also have a restlessness or at least a curiosity. You want to make sure that you are tapping out this life that goes ever so briefly, but that is something that you know you have a drawing, a calling, something uniquely you. Um, again, for those of you just getting on, I'm Pamela Shaw. I have been leading other people for 35 years, over 35 years, in discovering the amazing qualities inside of themselves and embracing the unique gifts and talents that God has given to them and helping them, supporting them, and designing the life and living their vision in a way that empowers and influences and benefits other people. And that's what I hope to do with you here today. So, have you ever asked yourself, Am I giving my very best right now? Is this my best? Do you find yourself scrolling social media, looking at other people's best, more than investing in developing your best? Have you ever felt like you need to make a move? You need to do something different. Do you feel boxed in? Do you feel boxed in by your relationships? Do you feel boxed in by your calendar? Do you feel boxed in by your time frame? Do you feel like you're in habits that serve you well? Well, today that's what we're going to discuss. And I have, oh, I did not set the timer. I'm setting a timer for 30 minutes because I, I won't go over 30 minutes today. Actually, it's set at 32. Let me move it to 30. Starting the timer right now. Um, I do not want to, oops, I want to start all over. 30, 30, 30, 30. I, research says that Facebook Live works best in, in, in 10 minute segments. What I'm getting ready to give you today is a five-hour workshop in person, and I'm not going to give you all five hours today. I found that that's what people want. They want all the information, and then they can take their design book, and then they can go to work this afternoon, and then tomorrow they can completely renovate their lives. That's not how it works. And so today I'm going to give you 30 minutes, and I'm going to, give, I'm going to keep giving, creating these lessons until there is no more conversation about it, until it's like, check, I've got it. And so today, in the 30 minutes that I've blocked off to give the very best of me to you and that you have marked out to give to me, we're going to do five things. We're going to, I'm going to cover, uh, I'm going to cover the backstory of the Design Your Life Planner. I'm going to talk with you about the importance of vision and dreaming big. Third, I'm going to talk with you how to integrate your busy day-to-day -day with your vision and to create goals by design. Fourth, I'm going to set up one day with you. We're going to walk through how to set up the success of one day of intentional living. And then lastly, we're going to talk a little bit about how to respond to fear. So let me say this. If you have a question as I'm walking through this, today it's just you and me for free. <laughs> I don't have any of my team here with me today. This is just you and me in my office. And so um, I would like for you to write in the comment section any question that you have. I'm going to come back on this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central, and I'm going to address every question, every relevant question that has to do with the design your life or something that I'm teaching today in response to that. So your question will get answered. If not today, um, it will get answered Wednesday night. So make a note to join me back. Okay, let's jump in. 
The first thing I want to do is to give you a little bit of a backstory about the Design Your Life because quite frankly it doesn't make any sense if there's not a story. I was someone who always wanted the best planner, the best design. I knew I needed structure in my life. By nature I'm not a structured person now. Those of you who know me think that's not true, but it is true. By nature I'm kind of a, where are my keys? That's really more of my natural style. And so I've created structure around me so that I can live in my sweet spot and do what I love to do which is teach and empower uh, other women to become their very best and so let's start with that what is the what is your where are you right now that that this tool can be of support to you here's the thing the concept of the design your life book for me became one of um, integration integration I wanted to integrate a life strategy along with my date book and, and planner along with my goals I wanted everything in one place how many different books do you have lists in? Do you have lists in notebook? Do you have lists in your planner? How many different planners have you tried? I mean, what planners have you tried that actually work? And that's a trick question because we have to implement a tool and make it work. But in today's world of technology, the tool, the folder, the notebook, it needs to tell you by design what to do. And so I created this for myself because I had been through Franklin Planner, I had been through Daytimer, I had been through four or five other well-known uh, Levenger uh, planners that did not work for me. They didn't do what I wanted them to do, and so I created my own. And my late husband, Jerry, was in the office next door, and he would put it on the computer and put it together for me. And then I would edit it, and then I would ask him for a revision, and he would put it on and give it back. And so when I became an independent national sales director with Mary Kay, I published it and um, started was able to the creative works program share the planner and so today it's all it's all over the place other people in and out of Mary Kay use it because it's effective and let me tell you why we're gonna start with strategy and I want to talk with you about the the importance of integration in your to-do list along with your strategy and your vision no coach walks into a football game without a strategy no politician walks into a campaign without a strategy. No architect walks into building a beautiful house or a building without a strategy. No college professor starts the course at the beginning of a semester without a strategy. So no QVC launch opens up the doors without a strategy. But you're going to live your life without a strategy? You're going you're gonna to pursue the dreams of your life without a vision and a strategy oh no you're not because we're gonna approach it differently so that's the first thing and then the second thing is that what that strategy has to come vision so I'm gonna take you straight to the design book I want to take you straight to the one of the very beginning pages when you open the design your life live your vision strategy uh, the very first page is a, a little bit of a, a welcome from me I hope you'll take time to read it and then the first two pages these are two of the very most important pages. The first one says, in my wildest dreams, before I die. In other words, a bucket list. People don't stop to think these things because they cause us to realize the brevity of time. They cause us to realize that we, that we won't live forever. They cause us to realize that we might not be on course for our lives. They cause us to think things like, am I doing what I'm doing today because I'm designing my life or am I doing what I'm doing today because it's what I did yesterday and I haven't considered any greater or bigger or more wholesome plan for my life? Am I doing today what I'm doing out of passion and desire and design or am I doing today what I did yesterday because I haven't thought about it in a while? That's an important question. So this first one is in my wildest dreams. I want to talk to you about your wildest dreams. The only species that God created to be able to think and strategize and love and select and choose is you and me, human beings. God gave us the ability to think. And let me tell you something right now. Here's the beauty of your brain. Did you know? that you can override your IQ? Did you know that you can override your DNA? Did you know that you can change your thoughts and change your way of thinking? And in doing so, you will change your life. I have been so enthralled in the past two or three years of researching the brain. And like any other beautiful organ in your body, it has a way of functioning. And God has given us the freedom to think thoughts that will serve us well and will glorify him. So here's the thing. You're like, well, no, that's not true. I, I get a thought and I didn't want to think that thought. Oh, that might be true. A thought pops into your mind. 
a thought pops into your mind, but then you get to choose what happens next. You get to choose if it stays there. You get to choose if it's a worthy thought. You get to choose if you park on it or if you dramatize it or if you what if it all the way out to a, a destructive place. Or you get to, to choose if you say, I, I expel the thought, cancel, cancel, and you create a new thought. Have you ever been asleep at night and, and awakened to a bad dream? And the dream is like, it's just so far off bizarre. And you have, and you, so you start rethinking, you create a new thought. You create thoughts about Christmas or you create happy thoughts and you start thinking, no, I want to dream about this. Have you ever done that? <laughs> Do you have a dream that you have that you have to kind of restructure? Well, that's the kind of power I'm talking about. And so in your wildest dreams, in order for you to get to, I know you, I know where you want to get, you want to get over here in, in a day. You want to you want me to teach you how to make the most of a day. Okay. That's important. But not until you have gone through the strategy, the vision part of your life. I am inviting you right here, right now, most important part of the 30 minutes, to dream big. Are you ready to dream big? Would you like to be dreaming bigger? What's keeping you from dreaming bigger? Is it a past disappointment? Is it someone else in your life? Is it a little girl voice? Someone told you that you couldn't or shouldn't or wouldn't? Is it a limiting belief based on a historical situation or relationship? A classroom teacher, well-meaning, but said the wrong thing and it's stuck in your mind? Why have you not been dreaming big? Because it's not realistic? According to who? So I'm going to invite you right here, right now, to change everything about from this day moving forward. You're going to be a big dreamer. Why? Because God created you to be. Your big dreams serve the people around you. Your big dreams serve your community. Your big dreams serve your family. Your big dreams serve the world. And your small dreams and your small thinking and your limiting beliefs and your wounded behavior serves no one. So what is it that you, in your wildest dreams before you die, that you want to accomplish, a place you want to go, a talent or skill you want to develop. I want you to fill this out like crazy. Just get a pencil. Don't feel like you have to mess your, you're going to worry about messing your book up. Just get a pencil and just start writing. And then the next page is a wish list. And it's developed in two categories. The first category is within one year. And the second category is within your lifetime. Now, this is only going to last you every 90 days. I'm going to explain why in just a minute. But this is not the first time you'll be writing this. I have 20 years of these books. I have 20 years of these books. Every 90 days, I fill a new one out just to see where I am, just to see what I've, if I'm living in, in accordance and with integrity with the life that I say that I want to live. So my biggest life, career, vision, dream, desire, let it flow. Let it flow. What's your wish list? You don't have to believe it yet. Just write it down and dream big. Within one year, what would you like to accomplish and during your lifetime? The success of your life from this point forward starts right here. Until you dream big, until you consider these really important questions that if you don't consider them, you will find yourself in a rocking chair of regret. There is nothing... That, the, the biggest fear that you have in the whole world is so worth overcoming to dodge that regret. And so what I'm going to do as your coach today is encourage you and inspire you and cheer you onto taking the time. Why don't people sit down and think about these questions? Well, one, there's distraction. Right now in my house, there's no other distraction. It is you and it is me. There's nothing else going on. There's no TV in the background. There are no notifications on my phone. It's just you and me. So I've carved out the time. When will you carve out the time to be alone for 30 minutes to an hour to contemplate this wish list, to contemplate your bucket list? When will you take the time to sit down and ask God to bring to your remembrance perhaps a dream or a wish or a thought from years ago that you put to rest for whatever reason it was? When will you sit down and just do just this part? See, you want to know how to use the design book fully. I'm telling you that the integration of the design book, the strategy, which include the life strategy, which includes your vision, your dreams, your goals, along with a date book, the practical of every day. There are only so many hours in the day, along with a planner, planning your life and then executing it. Okay, so... 
back to the design book uh, inception. For me, I, I had a sense of urgency that I needed to pay attention. And God kept reassuring me in my prayer time. I wasn't just like completely restless about it. He kept reassuring me, you're, you're not going to miss it. You're not going to miss it. So I want to be a voice today that passes that along to you as well. You're not going to miss it. If it's urgent to you and it's important to you to live out God's biggest dream for your life, you're not going to miss it because you're tuned in. You're tuned into him. You're tuned into that message. I was on a treadmill one day. It was when Thomas was very young and I did most of my workouts at home because it was more difficult to get to a gym. And I was on the treadmill one day and literally the phrase, design your life, live your vision. It came to me just like that. And I was like, Design your life, live your vision. Design your life, live your vision. And that became the template for what I've now been sharing for 20 years, 16 of it, a copyrighted, officially printed book <laughs> that I'm so happy to share with you today. So that's the backstory, the importance of dreaming big. I feel like I've covered that. And now how to integrate this into your day to day, how to set goals by design and how to create a day. Well, when I created the design book, I decided to create the calendar that comes with it, and it is um, it is a two-sided, two-sided, six months at a glance calendar. People are like, but those squares are so small, I, I don't think I can write in them. Well, again, that has to be your choice. It has to be your decision about how your brain works and if it works for you or not. The reason I created this is that as a young mother, I did not want to travel back-to-back -back weekends with a small child. And so it worked out best for Jerry and I in that season to really look at how much I traveled and how much I was here and how we scheduled our, our days and our lives. So for me, having that six months at a glance was important. Now, here's how, here's how mine looks today. This is, my current, uh, this is my current calendar and my current schedule. Here we are. <laughs> that looks a little different, doesn't it? I do a lot with color. I mark days off. I, I put big yellow blocks around the days and weeks that I'm going to travel. It's very visual to me. Color lights up the brain. Uh, color gives you indication of, of clues. And so for me, that works. Now, that's only one piece of it. This is where your money is. Oh, my gosh. Just as that's all the time there is. Okay, because here we are. Here we are. Here we are in September. Here we are in September. And these... These are the days left in September, and that's it. This is, this is the time that you have. You have the 18th through the end of the month. That's it. We all have the same number of days. So what are you going to do with your days? That becomes the question. And this is the most important thing that I ever put together in my life, and I'm so grateful that God gave me the idea and that I can share it with you. It's a sticky pad. It starts at 5 in the morning, and it goes to 1030 at night. You can adjust the times if you're uh, more of a, a vampire with your life, but you can adjust the times. This is all the time there is. When you're working to structure your day, you want to schedule your day one half hour at a time. If you don't, let me go back to some of my original questions. How much time do you spend personally scrolling other people's life stories? How much time do you spend looking at Instagram or Facebook and wishing that you had or regretful that you aren't or wondering if you could? How much time do you lose living someone else's life vicariously. Have you ever felt like it was time for you to make a move? And so the time comes back down to a very important, um, it's a very important piece of, of your next step. So I want to show you my today. <laughs> and uh, well, let me first show you, let me first show you just a day, okay? So this is a day, and it is all designed out. My priority list, uh, six most important things to do, people to call, evening people to write. If you're looking at your design book, open it up to one page. If you don't have a design book and you'd like to get one, visit us at PamelaShaw.com, click on Design Tools, and Nicole will ship it out tomorrow as long as it's been placed by midnight tonight, I think is the deadline. So PamelaShaw.com, click on Design Tools. If you're looking at your design book, I know many of you just got yours in this week, open it up to just a regular page. And I want to walk you through 
the process of making that happen. I use Crayola markers. I like to work in color. And you can either have a system for your color or just random color. I like to see a lot of different colors. It makes me look forward to getting to the next thing. I found that about my subconscious mind. Like if I see a pink one coming up, I'm like, okay, I can't wait to get to that. So I use different colors just for the, for the sake of creativity. So the, the book, as you look at it, the far right side of the book is more of your action-oriented side. First, you've got your six most important things to do. And then you've got people to call to text. And then you, at the bottom right, you've got people that you want to write, um, either a note to or an email to. And then the bottom left, you've got evening. I originally put the evening section in there because as a young mother, there were things that I needed to do at night that required more concentration, and I didn't want to force myself to try and do them during the day, and so I would schedule those things for the evening. Maybe they took 15 minutes, maybe they took two hours, but if they were going to take more concentration in that season, I needed to do them in the evening. I've left that section here, even though it has many different edits has had many ed edits since then because there are still things, a couple things that I would like to do in the evening instead of the priority of my work day. So let's, let's, let's talk about this. There are tips on page eight of putting it together. Let me just say that right now. If you flip eight pages into your design book on the back of page eight, there are tips to putting the entire thing together. Key number one, date every page. So whether you're working from my planner or another date book, date every page in ink. Because if we're going to track 90 days, let me talk to you about the real quick principles behind 90 days. In 90 days, you can change your life. In 90 days of sustained focus, you can change your life. So a question you want to ask yourself right now is, what do you want to accomplish this next 90 days? Is it a health goal? Is it a weight and health management goal? Is it a fitness goal? Is it a business goal? Is it a financial goal? Is it a relationship goal? Is it a clean eating goal? Is it a parenting goal? Is it a decluttering goal? What do you have in the next 90 days that if, if one thing could change in 90 days, if you could change one thing in 90 days about your life or relationship or your business, what would that one thing be? That's where we're going to start. And so you're going to ask yourself the simple questions because in 90 days, and that's why this is in 90 days, in 90 days, you can change anything. You can change your body in 90 days. You can change your relationship or your marriage in 90 days. You can change your career and take a grand promotion in 90 days if you're intentional about doing it. So that's the first principle in my Design Your Life series. The second one is this. Time invested in one area is time away from another. So let your yes and no take on great weight and be very intentional in what you say yes to and what you say no to. Example, my being here with you today is me not doing something else this afternoon. And it's not just the 30 minutes that I'm with you. It took a minute. It took a minute to get some light set up. It took a minute to make sure I had my, my Facebook app ready. It took a minute to make sure all of the dynamics were ready. So it wasn't just the 30 minutes. I invested more to get ready for this as well as the 30 minutes here. And you carved out 30 minutes for me. So 30 minutes of you doing this is not, you're not baking cookies. You're not uh, watching football. Uh, you're not making booking calls. You're, you're here with me. So yes to one thing is no to something else. So at the end of the day, at the end of my life, my yes accumulates and so does my no. So time accumulates. That is a principle you've got to wrap your head around. So whatever you're doing over and over and over again, you're going to get a result, and it's going to be the accumulation of that choice. Whatever you don't do over and over and over, you're going to get a result, and it's going to be the accumulation of that choice. And so time invested in one area is time away from another. Be very intentional about your time. That's why this becomes very, very important. Okay, I'm not going to give you more of the principles on that on, on the Design Your Life series. I'll save that for later, but those two are critical because in 90 days, here's the beauty. In 90 days, you're going to have a record of how you've invested your time. So date every page. Don't pretend like Sunday the 18th didn't happen because you didn't get enough done. No, that doesn't count. The day counted anyway. It will come and it will go. So will September 19th, Monday and the 20th Tuesday. Date every page for 90 days. Put a yellow sticky pad on every page, on every day. Every day has two pages, a, a, a more action-oriented page and a little bit of a delegation page. So we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Date them all. They matter. 
90 days is going to come, 90 days is going to go. Here's the beauty of, of where we're going with this. So in the front of the design book, we're starting out with your dreams. Before I die, what do I want to accomplish? We're moving into um, your wish list, what you would like to have happen in a year or in your lifetime. The next thing we will be talking about is your mission statement, your personal mission statement, who you are, what drives you, your business mission statement. And then the next page has goal, areas for goal setting, spiritual, family, career, physical, personal, social, educational, and financial. I'm gonna teach you how to goal set and how to choose only a few categories for great effectiveness, how to take a long-term goal down to a benchmark goal. The next page has affirmations. We're gonna retrain your brain how to think. You're like, what? Okay, here's the reality. Take your computer, for example. Are you a Safari or Chrome user? Which is your browser? Which do you prefer to use? I've always used Safari, but lately my Mac seems to do better on some sites on Chrome, so I have them both kind of up. When I first started doing anything on Chrome, I would wait for my passwords to pop up so that I could go straight to Neiman Marcus, for example, and I'm like, oh, what's my password in Neiman Marcus? I don't even know. Safari has them all stored because I've been there so many times. Safari knows all my passwords, but Chrome doesn't know any of my passwords. Well, when you say affirmations, you're retraining your brain. It's like going from one familiar browser to a brand new browser that doesn't know any of your defaults, that doesn't know any of your negative thinking, doesn't know any of your bad habits. And we're gonna work through the process of affirmations to retrain your brain. And then the next one, it says habits to create by breaking the habit of and creating the habit of. Talk to you more about that. Then master lists, which are important. I'm gonna flip through that. And then how to set the book up. Now, why did I walk through that real quickly? Well, because at the end of every week, at the end of every seven days, I'm inviting you, your design book will invite you to flip back and look at what you've written down before I die in the next 90 days, in a year, what I would like to have happen. And in my lifetime, what I would like to have happen, uh, what goals I'm working on, what are the short-term goals, what are the long-term goals? When do most of us think about goals? Most of us think about goals December 31st, January 1st. We set goals. We're usually a few pounds heavier after a few sweets and monkey bread and Christmas and holidays and we set goals then. We're a little bit more broke then. There's more in our credit card. So we set financial goals. We set health goals. We set all that and then we write them down somewhere. Can't find them. Can you find your goals that you wrote January, December 31st last year? Do you know exactly where they are? Because if they're not up and if they're not visual, it's so unlikely they're not happening. That was one habit that, that drove me to create the design book. I couldn't find my goal book. I was looking for my goal book and I couldn't find it. And that's what drove me to create this because I wanted to integrate my vision and life strategy, my goals, my date book, and my planner. I wanted it all in one place. So the reality is that because we don't write our goals down frequently and we're not looking at them all the time, we forget. We're, we are creatures of habit and we forget. Plus it's easier to keep doing what we did yesterday than it is to create a new habit of something that would really serve us well. And so what happens at the end of seven days is the book, the planner invites you, go back, look at what you wrote, look at your goals. How are you making progress? It invites you to kind of give yourself a little assessment because if you stay on top of it, think how exciting it's going to be. If 52 times a year, you actually look at your goals, rewrite them, four times a year because you need four planners. You actually have to rewrite them multiple times a year. What do you think the odds are you're going to get greater results? I mean, just the sheer repetition of focusing on what you said you want. It's, it's exciting, you guys, and it's an exciting way to accomplish, and it's an exciting way to start believing in your dreams. And so, so you take a day, and you fill it out, and then on the left side of the day is uh, wake time, sleep time. Again, these were all for my own accountability. I, not This is your book. It's kind of like your journal. It, 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 it's personal because it's just for you. The accountability of wake time, sleep time. It has food choices. What'd you have for breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack. This one you can see I wrote, clean, finally. <laughs> I'd, I'd been on a bad run. I'd had a rough run of things and so I was excited that on the uh, 20th, <laughs> oh, what's that? 
Oh, of August. That wasn't that long ago. I finally had a clean day. It's like, woo, giving myself a start. And then errands to run and then what to delegate out. There's a quote uh, on every book, and, and I just re uh, edited the book recently. So this quote says, obsessed is a word the lazy use to describe the dedicated. It's on the wall at the yard where I used to work out, and so I love that piece. Okay, so on every page you see a yellow sticky pad, and then you just see that it's it's custom for you. So let's move forward to uh, to my today. I have something to confess now. Ready? Are you ready for a confession? Would you like a confession? I'm not sure that I've ever lived out the exact day the way that I wrote it out, ever. Like exactly the time that I got up and exactly the time that I got started and exactly half hour at a time and exactly what I intended to eat and exactly the six must list. I usually over plan and under perform. Does that surprise you? You think less of me now? <laughs> I hope it encourages you. Because I don't know that in, in 20 years of doing the design books and this process, very intentionally, I don't know that I've ever had one exact day the way that I wrote it out. And this is what I want to let you know about being intentional. When you get intentional with the way you want to live, you're willing to dream big. You know what you want to accomplish. You're willing to put yourself out there and put your heart on your sleeve and let the world see because failure or success, it's still more public now. And if you're willing to dig deep in and give it your best, I'm telling you, more dreams will come true. I promise you're going to be able to design a life that you love and live your dreams and live in your vision every day. Not because I say so, but because you choose to do it. And because there is a better way than just keeping a date book and keeping lists and keeping a planner. It's integrated living. It incorporates your life strategy, which includes your vision and your dreams and your goals and your habits. Along with your date book, which you have to keep a schedule, and your planner. All of it in one place. And so, let's see. Would you please share this with somebody that you think might b benefit? Just click the share button on your Facebook and it will put it on your page and then you can let them know that they can share it. Um, if you have not yet put your question or your questions in the comment section, go ahead and throw those questions in because again, this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central, I will hop back on and I will answer your questions uh, to, catch up, uh, to catch us up. And then I will let you know on Wednesday night when the next session, session number two of Design Your Life, Live Your Vision is. You have homework. You have homework. Um, your homework is, number one, to go to the Before I Die section and the vision section and to fill those pages in. Let it flow. Let your subconscious go. Ask God, Lord, please bring me, please bring to my remembrance, please bring to my mind now what specific thing you're calling me to. Show me how to dream big. What do I write down on these blanks? And you know what? Just let it flow. There are no right or wrong answers. Nobody's grading it. This is yours. <laughs> Just let it flow. Let it go. And that's your homework between now and the next time that we get together. Yes, go to page eight and read about how to put your design book together. And uh-oh, that's it. That's a, that is a really weird timer. <laughs> <laughs> but that's 30 minutes. And so I'm about to wrap it up. You can follow me on Instagram at Pamela Shaw. You can follow me on Snapchat and Twitter at Pamela W. Shaw. And then the last thing I want to say is responding to fear. You're feeling really good right now because it's you and it's me. And I know you can do this. And I know God's got something great for you. And I know you know it too. I know that you want to embrace the unique qualities about yourself and the talents that he's given to you. I know you want to design your life and live your vision. And if you believe that this planner can help you, then, you know, go get four of them and stock up for the rest of the year. Uh, but the reality is it doesn't matter if you're using a spiral notebook or somebody else's planner. That's not the point. The point is that you can live a life by design and live in your vision every day. Responding to fear. Fear oftentimes operates out of limiting beliefs or insecurity or just lacking confidence or lacking skill. When you argue for your limitations, you get to keep them. So instead of just saying, you know, 
I am this, and it's a negative thing. If you argue for your limitations, you're going to get to keep them. What we're going to work on together is removing limiting beliefs and removing any kind of limitation that you might have in your mind. Because there are two things going on right now. There's your current reality, and then there's your future reality. And I'm really far more interested in your future reality. I believe that you're someone who's going to make a difference, a difference in your family, a difference in your community, and a difference in our world. I believe there's something so spectacular about you and that you're going to discover it. And in discovering it, you bring that gift to other people because you choose to live your best life and to bring the best version of yourself forward. So, uh, kind of awkwardly in these. <laughs> I guess it goes like this. I've seen a lot of questions come across. Thank you for taking the time to write those out. Um, I've seen a lot of love come across. Thank you for feeding me. And uh, I consider that great eye contact and just love energy from the audience. Uh, as uh, I got on here to kind of give a Girl Scout effort for my first live Facebook uh, session with you. And so I will be back on Wednesday night, 7 Central, to address your questions. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday afternoon. God bless you and Godspeed.